Hi Stampin' Friends, it's Chris Slogar from BuckeyeInklings.com and today I want to show you how to make these cute little bags. Now I kind of styled them after the 31 tote bags and I'm calling them a uh, tailgate bag because that's what you would tote all your stuff in and plus I've used um, kind of like team spirit stuff. So of course our team here is Ohio State Buckeyes and we have these great little um, K cups, and then I have wrapped um, chocolate buckeyes, chocolate peanut butter buckeyes uh, in my bag. So, of course, you can make them for your team or for another occasion. You could have a little, um, like a couple of little Christmas images here or something, but they're really cute and different. And I size them just perfect to hold a K cup. I think, you know, like a Starbucks K cup or hot cocoa for um, Christmas would be really cute. Um, I've also used, okay, so this is this year's, um, Twall Tidings designer paper, and I'm lucky that my team has red in it because I can use all the great Christmas papers. Um, and I've used that with real red. I've also made it here with, um, last year's Farmhouse Christmas, um, paper, and I just want to point out the tag if you're going to package these like this, um, if you're a Buckeye fan and want to make this little Buckeye, the punches I used were, some are retired. The The greenery here behind the Buckeye is from the strawberry uh, from a couple of occasions catalogs ago. And then a one half inch circle punch. And then this little guy from last year's, um, gosh, that little punch pack with flowers had this punch, which I barely use as like a little petal in a center but it makes a nice oval shape for the Buckeye. So this stamp is from this year's Cup of Christmas stamp set. I think that's just so appropriate for anything like a gift card for Starbucks or um, these little K-Cups sending you a cup of cheer. How great is that? Okay, but let me just show you how to make the bag and then you can decorate it how you like. All right, so it starts from a base. Um, I'm using real red and it measures two and a half by four and it needs to be scored one half inch from each edge. Okay, so I'm going to do that real quick. So I'm scoring at a half and two and then turning and scoring at a half and three and a half. Okay, then to make the base, I'm just going to take my snips and on each side, on the long side, I'm snipping in along the score line to the horizontal score line. Okay, I'm going to rotate it, do the other side as well. Okay, and then I'm going to burnish those score lines and we're creating this base. The base is like a little tray um, that holds everything together. All right. So the tabs when we make this tray are going to the outside, okay? Because then the designer paper is going to wrap right around that and you're not going to see those tabs. So I'm just taking a little adhesive on the tabs. This doesn't have to be a really great adhesive because um, this project will be held together when we apply the designer paper to the outside, not in this step where we're making the tray. Okay, so I'm just truing up the corners of that tray and sticking the tabs to the sides. And then I'm going to take my designer paper. Now this measures one and a half by 10. And I'm going to apply uh, on the inside a long, a, a full length piece of tear and tape. Okay, at the bottom. So if your paper is directional, you know, figure out which is the bottom. Okay, this bottom piece is going to attach to this tray all the way around. And at this end, it will need to um, splice together over, over the um, starting edge. Okay, so I'm going to just reveal that adhesive. And I'll reveal this end as well. And then um, 
On the tray, I'm starting, um, I'm going to cover a little more than a half inch of that lip, okay, on one of the long sides to get started. And I'm standing it up straight and matching up the bottom of my designer paper with the bottom of the tray and pushing that together there. And then I can just follow that around and press so that the bottom edge of the designer paper matches the bottom edge of the bag. Okay, so we're gonna go carefully all the way around. I'm not forcing a crease. I like I like the fact that those look curved. Um, the the sides look curved at the corners. Um, you can you can press a little fold here where it meets the base. But then when you get to the back, just try to um, bring them together so that the top edge is nice and um, continuous. Okay, and that is the base of the bag. So then I've got my handle strips, which are 3 8 inch by 4 inch strips. You need two. And I'm taking my bone folder and breaking down the fibers a little bit to make them a little more pliable so that they can curve, okay? So we are going to attach them with glue dots and that will not be our long-term solution to attach, just kind of temporary. That cardstock is so stiff, I don't think the glue dots would hold them in place forever. But we're going to get them set, and then we're going to add this one half inch strip all the way around to lock everything down. Okay, so um, I'm using my grid paper. I know my bag is um, three inches long. I'm just kind of going to eyeball this and start. Um, my handle placement is going to be a little more than a half inch in from the corner. It's not going to matter too much because it's quite forgiving in look at the end. You, you can't really tell how even these are in the end, okay, especially once you pack the bag. Okay, so I'm just going to put those in place with my glue dots. And like I said, they're, the, the cardstock is stiff and it's kind of fighting um, to come free, but we will lock these handles in place in the next step. All right, so I'm just doing um, the other side kind of to match. Um, they have started not quite far enough out there. If you make a little bit of a mess on this rim, that's okay, you're gonna cover it. Um, but that looks good, that, those look pretty even. Okay, then I'm gonna take a piece of cardstock that measures a half inch by 10 inch and again, I'm gonna put sticky strip on the full length of it, or I'm sorry, tear and tape, and then start um, applying that to the top edge of the bag. Okay, so where where we have a seam in the back, I'm gonna I'm gonna start um, this piece as well. So we'll have both seams on the back, and I'm just lining up the edge of the strip with the top of the bag here, and carefully I'm going to follow around that top edge with my strip. And if I need to do a little adjusting on the handle before I cross over it, did that. Okay, and then this um, tear and tape will really hold those handles in place in the end. Okay, so the glue dots, you know, not quite, not quite strong enough to hold them forever, but this strip will secure everything. And you're gonna try to, you know, meet at the top and the back. Okay, and just press that all in place. So there you have the bag. So you just basically need to add your contents and decorate it how you want. These are, um, the stamps here are not by Stampin' Up. Um, the punch is a one inch circle punch and the gray background scallop circle is one and one eighth. And then like I said, on this one, 
This is from Cup of Christmas. This circle is one and three quarter, and the cherry cobbler on back is two inches. So um, have fun with that. I hope you'll give it a try, and please visit me if you need any of the supplies that you see um, at BuckeyeInklings.com for the online store. I also post a lot more ideas there. Thanks so much, guys.